I'm Miranda, as Cyrus said, temporaryhipster.com, by now. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk to you guys today about how to use agile software development processes for whatever, like not software development. Um, so let's get started. Oh, by the way, I made a Prezi, so I hope not too many of you are hungover and you can handle all the zooming and the animations. It's a good thing it's Tuesday, not Wednesday. Um, okay, so have you guys ever experienced this phenomenon where you've been working on a project for a really long time? And you know, you're just like, you're kind of in the groove of it, but it's been going on for a while, and you're like trying to remember like when you first started the project, like what were you trying to get out of it? Um, well, Agile is a, a process that kind of helps you s adapt over time and be able to remember the big picture goals of why you're doing what you're doing. So, what is Agile? It started as this, well, it still is a software development process, and the manifesto is kind of based around. Focus on the individuals working on the project, talking to one another instead of documenting every little detail about the project. Um, it focused on collaborating with customers a lot and responding to change over time and, as opposed to following a really, really long-term plan. Um, so for our purposes, it's basically just a strategy for getting things done where you commit to things in small increments and you adapt along the way based on the high-level goals that you've set up for yourself and you're measuring success on a really regular basis. So what I'm gonna walk through is kind of this, this idea of this board that you can put together, and it can be a physical board, or at the end of the slide, I'll have a link to a Trello template if you wanna have like an interactive version. But so let's go through this in kind of three steps. So, oh, by the way, um, another terminology that you hear a lot in Agile is the word sprints, and that is basically the increment of time that you're going to commit to a set number of tasks. Um, so for this purpose, we're going to say like four-week sprints. So in week zero, before you even start, you're going to do this step of mission and visioning. I'm sure this is something you guys are already familiar with, um, but at the beginning of a new project, it can be really good to like take some time with, you, with yourself or with your team to really clarify what you want to do, um, what, like even the culture of the team and how you want that to be. And if it's a personal project, maybe like what makes me specifically unique? Like what, what characteristics am I trying to be when I do these personal projects? So here's a few tools that I've found for this. Um, many of you have probably seen the business model canvas. I'll include a download to this um, at the end of the, the presentation. But yeah, it has a lot of really great prompts in there. I don't know, you can't probably see because it's really tiny, but there's like five prompts for all of these things about who, who do you want to help you? Like who are your customers? Like what, what kind of costs are you gonna have? Um, things like that. Uh, what, how are you gonna make money? Whatever. Um, you know, money, whatever. Um, a press release is a really fun one that I like to do with product management, but you could also do it for like, br like brand changes or like a viral campaign. Um, but kind of write about like how would you want people to receive your project when it's done in its most idealistic form? Like what would the, the best press release ever say? Or what would like a magazine article write about you in one year, in three years, in five years? Um, putting that up somewhere public that your team can see can be kind of inspiring to see, like, this is the eventual vision. Um, for personal or cultural visioning, and by that I mean, like, like within your team, if you want to, like, kind of specify together, like, you know, we have tag fee, but kind of specify together what your culture wants to be like, you can try some of these things. Um, so desired feelings or attributes is this idea of uh, asking yourself a bunch of questions to get to what three desired feelings do you, do, do you want that is the reason you're doing your project. So if you're like, I'm gonna like, eat healthier and exercise more, like, what is that feeling? Is it you wanna feel healthier? Is it you wanna feel more energetic? Like, what is it exactly? Um, best week ever, if you wanna, this is, would be a fun one to do with your team, to be like, in, if our team had the best week ever, like how do we interact with each other? What projects do we do? How much time do we spend on what? Um, and what types of tactics do we use to like have fun or be transparent with each other, use good communication, things like that. And then another one I kind of mentioned, but starting backwards, like list out, if you're the type of person like me who has like, I have like hundreds of Evernote files of just like projects I want to do someday, like 
just, you can't do all of that stuff, so like take it back and say like, why am I doing this project? Why am I doing this project? Oh, all of these projects are because I want to feel more creative. Like, what's the one thing that I can do right now to satisfy that particular feeling? Um, and then it's good to like, that can be a lot of stuff, so just take all of that visioning exercises, do a couple um, with yourself or with your team, and then distill it down into a mission statement. Maybe some of you have one already, but probably not a lot of people have personal mission statements, which can be a fun way to like stay focused and remember why you're spending time on personal projects that you're spending time on. Okay, next step is let's set up some objectives and some key results, some, basically some ways to measure um, the work that we're gonna be doing in our upcoming sprint. So let's look at some examples of this. So a good one might be increase the number of happy customers. Um, Aaron just talked about this, it's super important. Um, so set yourself, if this is like the thing you're gonna focus on in the next three months, say, then set up uh, two or three like metrics that you're gonna measure by. So you could say increase customer happiness by 10%. Well, how are we gonna measure that? It's okay, don't worry about that yet. You'll, you'll create an item in your sprint that is like measure it now and measure it later and create the score and you have to have some like do the work to create the measurement. But for now, just like set a baseline and you can adapt this as you actually start taking measurements when you go forward. Um, maybe it's like make work a happier, more creative place. So again, just like set kind of arbitrary measurements and you can figure out how to score that later. Oh, and also be sure to set a date. So like by the end of you know, Q3, that's when we're gonna measure or that's when we're gonna start and then we're gonna measure again three months after that or something like that. Um, you can also set these by like hour, uh, hours of time that you wanna commit. So if it's like be healthier, you're gonna spend an hour a day doing physical activity. So just say, you know, spend an hour a day. And you can also do it by a particular accomplishment like run a thousand miles in three months or something like that. Okay, now for the fun part, tactics and tasks. So actually doing the stuff that you are set out to do. Um, so this is kind of like probably what you guys already have a bunch of notes on, which is just like a big, huge brain dump of like methods for achieving these things that you want to achieve. So first of all, just get everything out of your own head. Do a brain dump with that. Then get your friends, get your family, get your coworkers, people from your team. Get people that you would like never get involved. Get customers involved. Think about it from a random weird perspective of like, what would a wizard do? I don't know, just come up with something like, something, a new, unique way to look at the problem. Um, have, a, have a facilitated brainstorm session. So just spend a lot of time getting out all of these ideas. And then you're gonna pick your top ones for the next month. And you're going to put them on your board here. So let's look at an example. So for increase the number of happy customers, you're gonna put uh, enough items that you can commit to for the sprint. So if you're doing four week sprints, then you'll put enough items on this in deck, on deck column just that you can do in that time. So maybe we say, okay, this month we're gonna create this really awesome brand new help hub and it's gonna have great content and we're gonna also build that really awesome tool that everybody really wants. And then every sprint you should also have a, like, a measure the impact of that kind of a task. And then you can have subtasks off of that. So if you're like, create a new help hub, you'll have to you'll build this help hub overlay, you're gonna have the, to create the content, you're gonna do awesome video content strategy. Um, and then as you work through them every week, you're kind of moving things into the in progress column. And you can also assign owners. Um, I wouldn't recommend assigning it to Lady Gaga. She probably won't do it. And um, you can put some estimated times like and then so if you want to be tracking like how much actual time you've spent at the end of the sprint, like, oh, we thought it was two days, but it was five days, why was that? Can be a good thing to bring up in your retrospectives, as Karin talked about. Um, another example, kind of more of a personal example, is like if you have things, like maybe you want to do some research tasks up front, like maybe you're like, I don't know, what's the best way to exercise? Like what's the new thing on, in the exercising front today? So you can have like your task in there for research. You can also just have blank ones that you add along the sprints, like to kind of help you see when, um, you know, when those like putting out the fire tasks get added up and that like prevents you from doing some of the other things that you committed to, it can be helpful to put those all together so you're like, oh, well just, we were valuing this other thing and that's why the stuff we tried to commit to 
got pushed down, and maybe you're okay with that, or maybe you need to figure out a strategy. Um, yeah, so then you just move it over throughout time between in deck and progress and done. And if you have a ton of ideas, then like way more than you can commit to in one month, uh, we create this thing called a backlog, which is essentially kind of your spectrum of ideas, like fleshed out to like very high level that you can just keep a place, a spreadsheet, a to-do list, whatever you wanna do, whatever works for you for that. And also, don't forget to celebrate your successes. Um, it can be really motivating to be able to see, like, like, that's why the done pile is just so exciting and so satisfying to move it over there. But you can also try this strategy of, like, um, maybe you can have a success column where you try to extrapolate on that success. So if I'm like, oh, like, this month I did 30 days of kickboxing, which would be crazy, and I've never done kickboxing, and I should, um, but you could do, you can extrapolate on that success. Be like, I did kickboxing and now I'm like super strong and I can run away from robbers and I can save orphans or whatever. Like a, a more realistic example might be, um, you know, we created this new help hub and uh, like documenting like how much more visits that brought to the help content, how much the ha customer happiness score went up. Um, Maybe you can start pasting like tweets that you get from customers there, like anything you can do to be like, hey, everybody who worked on this, check it out. Like people are really excited about it. It's really doing awesome things for us and our team. Did a lot of kickboxing. I think that's it. Um, so if you go to these Bitly links, the top one is this worksheet that I put together that kind of just like goes through this since Prezi is kind of like not as easy as a PowerPoint to like copy stuff from and things. Um, but it has all the downloads, the, uh, some exercises related to like desired feelings and best week ever and things like that. And then the agile Trello board one is a link to the Trello board that is kind of like this board. It's like not all like laid out like that, but Trello is a nice tool. So you can use that and you can follow me on Twitter and I'll tweet this um, Prezi as well. So thanks everybody.